and welcome back to the Verizon post-game interview as C9 grabs the first victory for the LCS in North America against Mad Lions. And Blabber, thank you so much for joining me after this one. Decisive gameplay, draft seems to be on point, but for me it reflects what you've been saying during a recent interview with Laura Lunardi for Dexero, the fact that you've been in Korea for a long time, you had enough time to prep. Tell me about this bootcamp and how much you feel like you've learned from it since the last time we saw you play. Yeah, I think this boot camp is something that we probably really needed after our performance in summer. I think we were all really disappointed we didn't win. And um, it's just given us like a lot of time to prep and really figure out what's good for us. I think in this tournament, you probably won't see many junglers play Talia. Um, you'll probably see more supportive yeah. junglers. I mean, maybe they will, but I think it's just something that's been working for us. And we were able to, you know, kind of discover what was working for us because of the extended boot camp. I think it's an interesting approach because historically, you never shy away from paying, playing off meta picks. And especially what you feel is strong for you and not especially in the meta. How much room do you feel like there's in the jungle right now for these wacky picks that you might play? Uh, I'm not sure like there's that much room for like super wacky okay. picks, but I think there's like you can really play different styles. For example, this uh, the match before us, you were able to see Piozzi play Lee Sin, owner play Sejuani. Now I'm playing Talia, right? There's you can play tanks, you can play bruisers, you can play like mages in the jungle, farm heavy champs. So I definitely think there's like a lot of different styles you can play for sure. You've been expressing that you got a lot of good screams, especially against the LPL and the LCK teams. Uh, a lot of good results against LPL, not so much uh, around LCK. Could you elaborate on this and which region did you learn from the most? Um, honestly, probably not LCK because we were getting, we were just <laughs> getting stopped so much. I, I wasn't really learning anything. Right. <laughs> I, I was learning, obviously, right? Yeah. And my, I'm sure my laners were learning their matchups, but yeah, we're definitely struggling versus them, uh, especially KT. I would say. Um, we had the hardest time against, but uh, probably like LPL has been the best practice for us uh, this tournament. It's looking really good so far for C9 from what you've been saying and the fact that you feel like this time feels different for your teammate, your confidence and everything. Could you elaborate on this and send a message to North American fans for what they can expect for C9? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think like we had the hardest opponent in the first game. Not that Matt is a bad team. It's just like the Asian teams I do think are a bit stronger. Um, so. I think you guys should be confident in us. You know, hopefully I was able to show it in game one, my team as well. And yeah, hopefully we can keep showing it going forward in this tournament. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, keep playing. Love the confidence. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you very Congrats much. on the first victory once again. And Casters, back to you for game three. Thank you so much, Law. And uh, humble blabber, just accepting the victory and looking to the future. Um, KT fans out there, what he said, not something to take to heart, just a warning. Um, and now on with the show. We have our next matchup. It's going to be Gen.G taking on Gam. And um, I have a feeling that the Vietnamese representatives might be in tough spot up against the Korean first seed. Yeah, um, there, there's, there's, there's no way around it. I think that Gam had uh, a really nice story arc and play -ins, right? Uh, underperforming at the beginning and then able to, I really think, uh, grow. You, uh, yeah. The players were talking as well about how the initial pressure uh, and how nervous they were, were were a big factor in why they were not able to perform to their level. Then eventually making it all the way, uh, defeating Team Wills, of course, in, yeah. uh, in a VCS rematch was really cool. Uh, and I think that in of itself, that's already an achievement to be proud of, particularly given that rough starts can be really hard to come back from. Uh, as, uh, as any region, I'm sure, can, uh, can attest to. But it's Gen.G, and this team has been maddeningly consistent over the last year and a half, as uh, we have been witness to. Yeah, um, we're going to just omit MSI from that whole conversation. And oh, that was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just sure. Gonna, we're just going no, to domestically. It. Yeah, domestically. Yeah. And, of course, uh, in summer, they looked absolutely fantastic. So coming off a... What looked like a breeze in the summer final, uh, Genji may just be going from strength to strength. But do you know what gives me hope, Chronicler? The first game? Team Liquid, exactly. Because that was way closer than I was expecting. And we could see some fireworks here. I, I hope we do. Me too. Um, because otherwise, uh, it could just be some exemplary gameplay uh, from Gen.G. And a game that will not be able to keep up. First, it's time to introduce the players, starting with the LCK champions for 2023. It is Gen G. And yeah, you might say that they lost Ruler, but they gained pace, and things have been looking all right, Chronicler. Yeah, when you get a 17-year-old uh, prodigy that doesn't feel like the step down that many would expect after uh, losing one of the best AD carries all time, it's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
And I think that the really key thing for Genji is that obviously last year in summer, they were the clear favorites. They were able to deliver on that, made it to semis at Worlds, then got knocked out by DRX. Uh, in, in, you know, DRX actually ended up winning, but I think given the expectations of the LCK first team, still was stuck. You already mentioned MSI also not looking too hot. And we'll see if Gam today can find the upset. Yeah, Gam wasn't actually in my pick'ems list, although I was so tempted at the very beginning because this team has been one that we've spoken about many, many times in international competition. And they are going to now make their way onto the stage for Swiss. Their first game, very, very difficult. But if they manage to get the upset victory here, my goodness, would that get them off to an incredible start here for Swiss. And you can see some smiles oh, on their faces as well. You know, Levi's yeah. showing everyone around, making sure that they're all comfortable. And we'll see whether Slater can have more of those incredible performances that we saw in planes. Yeah, especially towards the latter half. Yeah. Uh, I think, obviously, at the beginning, struggling a little bit uh, against uh, some of his opponents. But near the end, definitely, I think, a lot more consistent from him and Pallet. And... I think that you can see as well the smiles. I don't think these players are expecting anything today. And sometimes that can be the best. I want to draw your attention, and I'm going to bring this up. That man there, Delight, he was in Brion. You know who 2-0 <laughs> Gen G just before they won the LCK finals? You know which team did? You know. It was OK Man Bro. It was OK Man Bro. It was. They 2 0 the LCK champions in the last week of playoffs, or in the last week of the regular split. So, so you're anything saying is possible. the power of the blue shell the is the of only friendship weakness. Atlas. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, against the Gen G that has, has, has three back-to-back uh, -back LCK titles yeah. and has looked like by far even coming into the beginning of the year where a lot of teams were expecting either T1, obviously, or uh, DK actually to be some of the front runners. I think only T1 predicted Gen G. And then Yenji was obviously able to get the upset back in spring. And then um, in the summer finals, definitely able to also benefit from KT yeah. having a tough one. Indeed. And uh, yeah, it wasn't an upset. I'm definitely not going to say that as oh, far no. as the summer season was concerned. Genji were just monstrous. Of course, KT making a late surge uh, in the regular season. Playoffs was a very, very different story. So again, with their work cut out for them, now, Genji with score at the helm are uh, already off to the race as far as these bands are concerned. Syndra and the Callista both taken away. And uh, Peanuts Poppy getting some respect. Of course, it is a flex. Doran's played a bit of it as well. See what else they're going to be taking away here because Delight, oh man. Get done to. their, their yeah, homework. They know. They know. I wouldn't even be shocked if they end up uh, uh, not necessarily banning, but at least prioritizing an, uh, an Alistair pickup very early on because Delight on that champion is. Uh, it's yeah. simply not fair, as uh, we have seen many a time. I like the Maokai. I know that Maokai has kind of dropped in priority in the first couple of games we saw today. But Maokai, to me, is a great equalizer. It both uh, allows you to offensively play for objectives, use the ultimate as a way to uh, deny your opponent access to the area, while simultaneously, particularly against a team that in team fights is at the size of SGNG, uh, kind of slow down those snap engages. Oh, okay, yeah. well... Yeah, and, I'm not, uh, we're not surprised. No, and with the fact that Zaya and Kaisa are both up and available, um, you're not going to need to worry about taking away one of those. Of course, Slater has played a wide array of champions um, in Kaisa and Zaya so far uh, at Worlds. Hey, they work. They do. They're, they're great champions. If it ain't broke, yep. you do not fix it. Kiaya is, speaking of which, going to lock away one of those. This is the most played uh, for Slater. So it gives him a lot of uh, safety there towards that bottom side of the map. And it means that uh, Delight's going to have to find his angles. But what is going to be the next pickup here for Gam? We'll see whether uh, an archetype is going to uh, come into fruition here or begin to take form for Gam. Of course, Gam have had some uh, more uh, like of this. the wall picks. I love this. I think that denying uh, from really any any. I'd say Eastern Jungler, a Lee is always a good call. Deny uh, the even Jungler? What are you talking about? Deny Lee. Yeah, from yeah. Chovy. Okay, well, Atlas, we're I'm not quite, for we're the not place, quite there yet. I know <laughs> your pickums are riding on this. I'm trying to focus on the game. Okay. Uh, but I, as I was going to say, before Levi interrupted me uh, with the Lee pick, has played like Wukong. Obviously, his Nocturne is a very iconic champion for him, but instead, it's just going to be a classic. As Genji, uh, this draft tells us nothing. It, it, it is, this, this could it be. It tells us that you should probably ban Ari. 
Yeah, this, that, yeah, yeah, that, that's really the only takeaway here, because that's going to be locked in, and then Doran's probably going to play Renekton, and that's, that's it. Yep. And, Maybe uh, Jax, you know, if he's feeling spicy. Tati's going to probably uh, just lock Nautilus or something, I guess. What are we going to take into my the Alistair? Rel. Yeah. Ooh, I like Nico. Nico. Yeah, Nico is uh, definitely still a very strong pick here for Kachi. Something that I was uh, expecting to see a little bit earlier on uh, today. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, APA and Faker both played in our first game, and they really do love this champion. It was, yeah, I think it was bad, because yeah, they banned Ziggs they did and definitely Nico. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, uh, that was going to be uh, one of the things that I was ready to look out for. We are going to see it here in the third game of the day, though. And bans now to come through. So Ari, the only one that I can say is mandatory. Um, but Talia going to come out but first. Not a bad one, either. Yeah. Uh, Talia, Ari, I think, are, uh, are are definitely ones that we would think of when it comes to that Vi Ari combination, something that Genji, in general, are a slower-paced team. I don't think that they're slow by any means when it comes to making moves around the map, when it comes to like playing macro and, and getting objectives. But when it comes to kills, they're pretty low-key. Um, unless Peanut and, and Chovy get like Poppy Ari, uh, Vi Ari, uh, that, that, that changes things. And I think you want to try and avoid 2v2s like that, especially because with Lee and Nico, they're no slouch, right? The setup is really good for Lee follow-up if you're able to hit a root. Uh, and once you get Pop Loss some available, it can become very hard for uh, some picks to do well. But it's going to be LeBlanc instead here. I mean, there are a lot of things that you do have to ban away. Uh, yeah, I mean, Azir is, is like also hasn't been contested yeah. yet, but it, it, it's easier said than done, right? I don't think that there are wrong answers, but it's just Genji with their champion pools are always hard to prep for, particularly in best of one. Yep, and Renata going to be denied Ooh. here. A set is just going to be slammed. Um, of course, Genji, no stranger to set support. Life, of course, on the team for a very long time is the one that makes the set support very famous. Um, still, a flex could be thrown towards that top side if uh, Kiaya would like to get it up there, but probably going to be in the hands of Pallet because he actually looked pretty damn good in it uh, in the play-in stage. There's the Ari. Um, don't need to be a rocket scientist uh, to um, figure out that Chovy was angling towards that one. And often we see that that champions that are highly prioritized in uh, in, in planes, then once we get to groups, now Swiss, uh, the priorities really change. The complete and utter lack of Crocodile is really noteworthy, particularly with how much we know that a lot of Korean teams, uh, second of which that we've seen today is Gen.G, love the pick. It's going to be the Cassante Jax matchup, one that we've seen countless times. Uh, nothing too surprising there. Jax obviously in the sideline, very strong. Cassante can bear the brunt and uh, the amount of front line for Pays and the plasma activation coming from his entire team. Definitely going to be something that uh, Gam has to look out for. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking, you know, down the line as far as what Genji managed to pick up for themselves. A lot of mid-game fighting, a lot of pick opportunity yeah. as well, um, and also an incredible amount of comfort. Like, if you would ask me what the most played champions um, this year, uh, I'd say that, like, these picks are in the top three, top four for all of them. Delight, of course, because Alistair made it into the meta a little bit late, but we saw in the playoffs he was just incredible on that champion, so... Bit of a blind pick roster here. However, you look on the side of Gam, and what you need, I think, in order to try and challenge LCK teams, like the biggest weakness is often if you're going really, really fast in the mid game. And Gam do have the opportunity to up the tempo in the mid game and try and form themselves a snowball. It's by no means, you know, a way, a path to success, but I think if you're gonna win, it's a that's, decent that's, way that's to aim do. for it, you know? Additionally, I do think that the Genji composition is very short range, and you do have a lot of champions that, that kind of prey on that, right? Set loves it when people are trying to jump into him. Great yeah. counter-engage. Zaya is self-explanatory. Uh, and then uh, the Nico can also be used defensively. Use the Pop Blossom as a tool when Genji jumps on top of you. Uh, the problem is, can you execute on that? Because as mentioned, Genji generally, pretty slow team, very active on objectives, but not necessarily in kills. With a setup like this, though, I expect them to try and put a lot more pressure into Gam, and we'll see how well Gam is able to deal with that. Because if he gets to a position where your Zaya maybe picks up a couple of kills, anything can happen. Absolutely. I think mid-jungle is where our eyes are going to be glued for oh, yeah. both of these teams, to be perfectly honest. Like, if a Nico gets a large advantage, these Pop Blossoms can be game-ending. Uh, so that could be something to play around, but Vi Ari, I mean, 
it's pretty synonymous with not only strong mid-game power, but also just Gen G as a whole. It's how they've been able to get a lot of their advantages in the LCK, something that could be quite difficult uh, to um, come up against here for Gam. But you can see they're still in high spirits here on the desk. And if they can make their mark this early on in the tournament, my goodness, it's going to be some pretty uh, amazing things to take home. Hey, you know, if DRX can do it. Exactly. Hey, everything is possible. Hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm starting to believe in TL. Well, after today's game, like, I, I don't think right? that's, uh, that's no stretch. Nope, not at it's all. Pretty reasonable. Uh, We'll see. I think we have a pretty good idea once we get into mid-game. 10, 15 minutes is where I expect one of these teams to uh, have broken open the game to a certain extent. Uh, but if we get to, like, late game, even though I think, like, Lee and Nico aren't necessarily the best late game characters, maybe Gam can make something happen. Um, but we got to be honest as well. It's the LCK number one seed yeah. against the play-in team, so the expectations on GNG are that they uh, will be able to swiftly dispatch of their opponents. Yeah, there will be a fair bit of doubt if Gen.G don't manage to lock this one down. But Gam, they've got a chance. They are on the rift right now. Here we are, getting into our third game of the day. The LCK first seed up against Gam from the VCS. A tall order here for Gam. Yeah. But it was a tall order. It's been a tall order for other teams in the past, and they've been able to come out ahead. Hey, LCK team in the game. There we go. Got that pause. This is the in-game pause um, variety. Uh, we did see in our previous game that we had the pick ban pause. Yeah, classic. Variety. And we here at the LCK have a bit of a reputation when it comes to pauses. And we wanted to make sure here on the first day of Swiss that we uh, demonstrate what those things that we're known we, for are. We have to give, yeah, the authentic experience. Oh, exactly. Um, we've actually not been doing a great job because we've mainly been talking about the game and the teams. I know, it's really which sad. Which, you know, that that's not normally uh, what, what we what we excel at. And I actually missed out on a really cool tidbit from I, the last yeah, game that I really wanted but to talk about, but I couldn't. I think we should... We but should we can't, talk, we can't no, do it no, now. No, 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 you have to save it. But yeah. it is a great tidbit. And, like, you guys, when, when, he, when, when Atlas inevitably is going to talk about it, it's going to be great. Yeah. If, um, if you, you know, get to cast the team again, which is by no means guarantee. No. But, you know, Otherwise, if it it's does a missed happen, opportunity. I'll be very, very happy about it. And then maybe I'll, I'll put out a, you know, a, an, an, an X. It's, it's a lesson. That's what it is. Don't, <laughs> I don't even know what they're supposed to be called. Uh, Atlas, I'd like to enjoy the game, <laughs> the, the game, the two games that are ahead of us. Well, speaking of the game, I think we're going to bring up the draft and we can have a look at where some of this power is going to come from from uh, these teams. We've already mentioned mid-game power and things like that that both teams are going to be angling for. Um, but what's your take? Where, like, If there is a theoretical um, GAM victory before us, where does it come from, Chronicler? Uh, I'd mainly be looking at either trying to, uh, which is the riskier of the plays, right? To try and get an early uh, point of pressure towards Peanut and Trophy. Because I do think that the Vi Ari specifically spikes extremely hard at six, but pre six, you know, obviously if you land the charm in the queue, uh, it, it can have some power, but it, it doesn't really become nearly as life threatening and uh, as, as big of a problem to deal with until that point. Maybe get an early kill onto Levi, try and uh, put Genji on the back foot. But then the problem is uh, that has to be in a 2v2 because trying to invade Peanut, as we have seen many a time, it just doesn't really do that much. I think Peanut, yeah. uh, out of any LCK jungler, uh, by far is the most consistent at absorbing pressure, uh, much in the way that Blabber did last game, right? Just, he's fine, you know, flash down, maybe you give up a camp or two, uh, which in last game didn't even end up happening. Uh, and then outside of that, I think the one place where pays, in particular, to lie to a certain extent, uh, b b but the one criticism that you can levy towards pays is that his laning phase hasn't always been impeccable. And if we go back to, for example, uh, I want to say it was MSI 2022, Gumayushu and Karia versus the Saigon Buffaloes uh, in the first game of that MSI, they actually got pressured hard, right? So maybe that's the angle. Maybe you try and just force an early all in, have Levi take a creative pathing, and really put the pressure to pays in the light, because if you get to mid game and pays isn't behind, it's bad. It's it's yeah. not good. It's yeah. not good. You have to you have to keep him down. Well, I have a bit of an update, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We have a slight peripheral issue. I believe it was Levi. Um, if looking at the referees on stage, hey. anything, 
And we've got things upside down. BDS fan in the uh, yeah, BDS the and K-Corp fan. There we go. Um, and I had something else that I wanted to talk about as well. And it's gone. It's, uh, it's just gone. Did I, did, I, did, I, did I make you forget it? No. Oh. Um, no, it's my you're brain. Just, my <laughs> brain, not you. Not on you at all. Forgot it yourself. You want to you yeah, trace was, back the thoughts? Yeah, there was something that I... No, I, I oh, yes. Um, it was this. In fact, okay. it was this wide shot. I'm really glad that we get to, you know, check in with the Korean broadcast when we get this shot. Uh, one of the one of the largest reasons why I am excited uh, to have, have worlds in Korea, right? Obviously, it's it's really cool for us to welcome everyone here, but it's also as a Chovy, you know, he's just boot, he's rebooting. That's yeah. that's normal. Yeah, uh, Faker is, started it, and uh, everyone is uh, is is joining in. Um, All energy is expended on the rift, yes. not off the rift. Uh, is yeah, I mean, keeping using the energy to keep your well, eyes open. For a second, a waste. There, it looked like he was actually asleep, <laughs> and I don't think that's the but, aim. As I was saying before, I interrupted myself. Yes. Um, a, a habit that both of us find hard to shake. Yeah. Uh, the fact that Coster Jun is, is 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 here, you know, he, we everyone gets to listen to him. Uh, a living legend, just is. It's so nice. No, it's absolutely it's, fantastic. Uh, it's amazing. We, we actually get both. We get both uh, Sunke uh, yeah. and Coster Jun was here earlier on as well. I uh, had a chat to him back backstage after the uh, the T1 victory. And we were both very worried together for a few moments. Um, so we're just trying to make sure that we can get everything sorted out. I assume it might come down to a turn it off and on again situation, but maybe it's more than that because I'm entirely guessing as I, to everything is Delight is trying to let the cameraman know something. There are very few people that are as aptly named as Delight. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> because he's just always having a good time. He's always happy, always looking like he's, uh, like he's enjoying himself and uh, as much as I think a lot of the, f uh, the narrative focus for Gen G this year has been on Pace, which makes sense because of you know everything surrounding him, yep. uh, who we followed up on uh, his his experience early on. So we have some Weibo fans in the audience, of course, going to be playing later today against the NRG. Mm -hmm. um, the light journey with uh, uh, Gen G and, and T1 Academy slash Challengers into Breon, where he was a really large part of why the roster was. I think started the Garner fans last year, and then now to, depending on Carrier's form, well, many might call, and at least in I mean, summer, it's, the it's best Carrie support. It's Carrier, and Delight, that are the three best yeah. supports, and on any given day, the order could change. Yeah. And that is a crazy thing to think hey, about. Hey, Fleur from Sweden, just to see T1, and they saw like a banger T1 versus TL game. Yeah. Well, lucky. I mean, after the result, you know, it's yeah, halfway during, through, during it would have been like, I'm been flying a bit, back. A bit rough. Yeah, but nope, it's all right. Everything worked out, and as it turns I, out, it all depends on whose nexus falls down. I am just glad that we do. I, I said it before, but this is this is the this is the LCK experience. Yeah. You know, both in gameplay, and in, and in pauses. And uh, I have found out that it is in fact a mouse issue. We are mouse trading issue. the mouse out um, and making sure then afterwards that the mouse does in fact work. Um, and so that is what we're what we're battling right now. Uh, would you rather play with um, only mouse or only keyboard? If you could find a way to make, you know, league movement work with just a keyboard. Only... Um, uh, so you have to click every skill. Mouse. I think it has to be mouse, right? Yeah, I think it has to be mouse. I think it would be very difficult to play with only a keyboard unless you're allowed to use a trackpad, in which case... Well, that's just... Um, I'd go with that. Um, a trackpad? You know, like if you... Say you've got a laptop and you don't have a mouse. You'll have a trackpad. How, how often have you done this, Atlas? Never. Never. No. Oh, okay. Um, I was wondering if that was the reason actually, why, why why you play the way you do. I mean, I, I play terribly with all of the equipment that's perfectly set up. For uh, it's me. it's um, not the equipment's problem. It's, it's not it's the exclusively a you. However, thing. if you were to take away said equipment, ah, it'd be an absolute nightmare. It'd be so, worse. Yeah, we're not. Uh, I don't even want to give that any thought because it will mm. um, really deflate any self-esteem. Hey, look, we got a uh, we got. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Green desk, yeah, yeah, but look, there we got shocks waving as well. Oh, hi, hey, we got Jet. All of the desks. Kobe, Kobe's not wave. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. Hey, hey we guys. got the whole gang. Um, um, I assume that they're also up there, just in case this uh, particular pause goes for an extraordinarily long time. Um, but now we're, we're got, on screen, we're, so maybe, we don't maybe, actually. Maybe we're going to talk to them. I don't know. We could do uh, that. It's um, anything first, possible. I mean, let's just throw it over to them and see what okay. they want to do. How about that? Take it away, Shocks. Oh, thank you. We were actually trying to talk to you, but I don't think. Hello. I was oh, hoping they could hear us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now you yeah. can. Yeah, Hello. now we can. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey. So Hi we just wanted to remind you uh, <laughs> that Cloud9 just beat Europe. Oh, my God. So Shut they brought up. us back. It's uh, true. We decided to pause Worlds for a yeah. second 
just just so that everyone can just kind of sit in we there. When you're up, this. you're up. <laughs> <laughs> one one. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, Genji can't say. Can it up get any zero. better than one one? It, can it? That For would be, NA, I'm not sure. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, we do have a little bit of a, of a delay, a peripheral issue on stage. League officials are working on a fix. Um, I'd love to get your take maybe on Gen G. We didn't get a lot of time to talk about favorites in this tournament, but when you look at Gen G uh, and the fact that they have been so successful in the LCK, um, let's set the stage a little bit about it now that you have the first draft that they're choosing to field, Jet. Yeah, I think Gen G is an, just a fascinating team because... They've won three LCK splits in a row. But unless you really follow the LCK, you don't think they're very good. What? 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 Unless you follow what? the LCK. No, I'm serious. So listen to this. Like, I've heard so many people talk to me. We let them cook. We let them cook. Let them cook. Let them cook. I've heard so many cooking. people talk to me about Chobi, <laughs> okay. who only watch Worlds. And they're like, that guy's not very good. What? <laughs> He's saying because, other people say. Because literally, if you only watch Worlds in MSI, he okay. doesn't do that okay. well. Wow, okay. okay, you heard it. Jet said that about Chovy. Back he, to the casters. He got to play. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't this is actually the best point that Jack could ever be cut off in the middle of. 100%. He's actually going to come and invade our desk again just to finish his point in the middle of the game. Um, that's on my bingo card, uh, by the way, now after game you one. We were playing bingo? Yeah, I don't even want to guess what the point is that he was trying who to get to. You, who are you playing against? I'm not playing bingo. I'm playing with myself. I can always what? win if it's just me. That's, what's the point? <laughs> Pride? Oh, I <laughs> All right. Um, no! Okay, here we, uh, <laughs> did we actually, did someone go and talk to this? someone about letting Jat finish his point? <laughs> this is this is because of you. This is because it's, who plays bingo by themselves? I don't know. It's, it might just be me. There might be other people as well. But I'm the only one I know of. I don't know that many people, Chronicler. Get off my back. Can we throw it back to Shock so that Jack can um, finish his point? I think oh. we can. I don't, I don't know. Um, as, 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 as it's a... Uh... Oh. I, w right. I would actually... Before we... Before they're they're going to be with us. Yeah, we can okay. all speak I together. I want to share <laughs> a very fun story about Doran with you guys. It's the Shiv incident. Ah, uh, so we, I don't know if you yeah. guys know about this. So what happened in the LCK? We had in the first week of summer we had KT versus Gen G, uh, which was thrown off. There was a uh, there was a Aiming bug built static shift when, when it, was it wasn't a banned allowed item. to. Right? So it was a banned item, and then had to, they had to remake bad the boy. game because that, he yeah. built bad this boy. item. So, so yeah. that, that was that <laughs> oh. was very unfortunate. Very um, then what happened? Because he was he wanted to build Storm Razor because it was the same path, but then he accidentally built the wrong item. Let's pause the game. It was a whole thing. Then what happened a week later is uh, Doran, or a couple of weeks later, Doran actually pauses the game because he's playing Quinn and, and he built a shiv and it's not it's not proccing. It's not working. Yeah, and so he paused it. But as it turned out, he only had a Kerche shard in his inventory. <laughs> no he way. He hasn't finished this item. Yeah. And he paused the game for like a minute. And we're no. like, whoa, what's happened? Has he built a shiv? Is it illegal? No and then we look at the items. He hasn't built anything, as it turns out. <laughs> Anyway, Jat, about Chovy. I heard he was a know? bad player. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Did okay. he also forget to build something? His <laughs> level at international tournaments versus his level in the LCK is just wildly different. No? I mean... I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I think that he hasn't been able to show the potential that we've seen in the LCK internationally yet. And I loved the world's teaser that we got to see before the show. If you haven't seen it, I'm sh pretty sure it's going to be up on Lolly Sports YouTube. It is but he, he legitimately said, like, I'm not going to be nervous this time. So his potential, Chovy, like, is the best mid laner in the world, potential world champion. But, like, for me, JDG comes in as a big favorite. Yet we see, like, I swear, if we were to break down the last, like, seven or eight years of Worlds... There's been so many years where people are like, yeah, LPL's got like four of the five best teams, man. And then you see <laughs> Korea win every group. And last year we had a Korea versus Korea final. So I I just really want to see Gen G almost like reach their full potential or Chovy reach his full potential at world so he can get the recognition that he's garnered from LCK fans. But is this is this only in like the key like the final final matchups that they can play? Or is this are you brushing this like all his international performances. Because I feel like it's mostly in recent memory. Yeah. In like, you know, whenever they get knocked out. Well, like MSI, they just didn't even make final. 
That's, right. a, that's a good point. So I, 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 I'm, oh, as ah, oh, I, I just wanted to make a Keep make going. a counterpoint, but maybe we're in, we're in game. You're the one that's allowed to talk, Chronicler, because we're in the game. Well, yeah, so but you I, can was talk. A, I was having a fun they time. They can still hear you. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's not the same Atlas. <laughs> I want to hear what their thoughts are. They can always as just I, come over to the desk. As, as I was Jack saying, proved already. And you are, you are, you are with me on this one because I know you were a fan of this particular lineup. I'd actually argue that when Chovy had the least expectations on him is when he was the best internationally, which Absolutely, was Longwell yeah. Life. Mm -hmm. 2021. Yep. Um, let's not think about 2020 DRX, which I always do, and now I'm doing it again. But hey. here we are, into the end of the game. Let's uh, loving set, this like, from Levi. Yeah, go back again. Levi is just going to be stealing away Peanut's jungle. Peanut is going to know what's going on, um, but we'll see what's actually going to happen. Peanut's going to miss the uh, Vault Breaker, but it doesn't matter because uh, he's able to walk back, grab himself. Oh. Okay, that charm didn't miss on Ducati. Is uh, Going to find a Blooming Burst as well, so not too bad. Able uh, to even out the trade. So I think because of the bot lane situation, Levi didn't w run the risk. And he also, I, I, he wasn't aware of whether or not Peanut have Smite. But um, with red buff, like, and especially with Peanut missing Q, he wins the 1v1, right? So then it comes down to, do you think that uh, Palat can roam in time? And I think the Light did already have the move, so they didn't want to run the risk as the Light being a nuisance. Uh, and unfortunately for Levi, I think the Invade, Good idea that doesn't end up actually working out or making a difference. And now Peanut instead is going to double scuttle. It's the same as last game. Well, Face Breaker is going to come through here. Good headbutt to try and disengage from the fight. But already, Gam showing some aggression here towards the bottom side. You like to see it. And like you were talking about, double scuttle to come through here from Peanut. And Levi walking over Vision as well. It looks like Gam playing through a bit of a power point here as his bottom lane is in a pretty good spot. Although it is a stacked wave that Paige should be able to get done here, as there is the Hex Splash into the Face Breaker Delight. Just going to pulverize. Um, the Haymaker does come through, but the cow is going to be okay. And with Levi not actually getting uh, the early invade really working out, as oh, this is very valuable poke. Doran is stacking a big wave. And Peanut looking for the gank here. Levi's on his way, but I don't think he'll be in time. Look how low the health bar is. Yeah, Doran already having that chain. That's why it's so much damage to come out. The Q3 is going to connect as Levi just going to walk into the brush. I think Peanut was, I don't know, maybe he was just hoping that he'd be able to get uh, the back off, but it not actually happen there. He's going to be able to get himself out of the way. So no dive. Um, and now Trophy here in this mid lane looking for a charm opportunity. There are two Nikos, though, and that can make things difficult. Doran just having a heck of a time here. And Kiaya definitely needs to be careful with the health bar. Has been able to farm really well, though. We see a lot of yeah. trading happening towards this top side. So uh, with the jungle buffing of both junglers being a little bit wonky due to the invade, uh, we do see that uh, Peanut heading up there again. I was about to say, is all the ultimate. All right. Yeah, there's the all out. Level six going to get gained here by Doran first, but doesn't find the opportunity. And now Kiaya will be able to get to that level six pretty oh. safely under his turret. You would assume. Uh, Peanut moving on over. As he does flash. not have the ultimate just yet. Vault Breaker going to come through. He's going to connect it this time around, but there is a Counter Strike and Peanut tanking the turret. He has to flash to get out of the way. And Kiai is like, bring it on. We'll see what else you can do. But there it is. First Blood comes down, but it's immediately answered. Doran overestimating his tank in is there and really good use of Counter Strike there by Kiaya. Peanut actually using his E empowered auto attack. That missing damage ends up costing them. And that's a really hefty investment. Might end up being worth it. I'm not sure what the wave state is. If it ends up pushing away from Kiara, Doran can catch it, not miss too much. Might be somewhat worth if you add the first blood to it, but definitely uh, not the cleanest dive there from Gen G and Yam. Gonna be happy that Kiara is able to pick up a counter kill as well. And he holds on to his flash. Yep. Going down the line as well. Things pretty even in the other lanes, but let's have a look at this replay. As uh, we do see, Kiaya using the Leap Strike, then even with the Q hitting Peanut, I think could have tanked an extra turret shot, really early flash there, but he doesn't want to get caught in the Counter-Strike with the turret on top of him. And then Doran's like, yeah, it maybe, maybe... It I, almost I, was really it, good. Yeah, uh, but he's not tanky enough. Does come through. All right, Peanut. we are going to be able to find the snare, and Peanut going to go down. Levi collects a second here for Gam in the early game. And this is exactly what we have been talking about. Want to see Gam try and play as aggressive as possible in this early game. As Doran, again, these, both these guys just trading perpetually, both sitting on uh, about the same items as well. Uh, but getting these type of picks onto Peanuts does take away a lot. I think post six is going to change some things. 
uh, with Trovi and Kati actually both flashing as well. I don't think that was uh, caught on cam. That does mean that the offensive pressure for Trovi uh, specifically definitely going to be somewhat mitigated. We will have access to his ultimate, so definitely still going to be able to apply some pressure, especially once Peanut hits six. But it's interesting to see that uh, all across the map, there is a lot of X, and I think that type of volatility, really what you're looking for is, yeah, Peanut goes in here. They feel like they have an advantage, but crucially, Pace is behind this play, and you can't just walk past that set. Yeah, I mean, Trovi was behind the play as well. I yeah. mean, it was Gam collapsing way faster. Pretty well done. Really like to see it. And Peanut just back to his farming ways here. He is ahead by a couple of camps, but honestly, gold entirely even. Gam's gonna be pretty happy with how this game started. Doran be able to find Kiaya here, but um, E, one heck of a button to press when you're playing Jax. But remember, up, I don't think Genji can contest this, and they're also not really in a position to try and play for the cross map. Maybe they look to get a kill on the exit here. The light's on his way. Yeah, Kiaya is an opportunity as the Vault Breaker being charged here for Peanut. is going to come on through. Pallet going to be fighting Doran. Peanut still just in the fog of war. Doran's going to deliver them. The Haymaker comes on down, and Peanut, he is going to finally start fighting, but he's straight into a Pop Blossom. He manages to pick up the kill onto the Jacks, and now it's Delight. It's Toby, and it's Gen G that are striking back in the battle. It was almost so good for Gam. But Genji reigns supreme in the end. Well, Genji really playing with fire there. As all oh. of this. Cardi is going to look for the snare, but doesn't quite get it. Dash just long enough for yeah. Doran. And uh, yeah, that, that was very narrowly timed around the the, uh, the arrival of Delight. But but uh, Genji definitely cutting some corners there. And Gamma also got the Herald. So even though the kills are favorably traded uh, for Genji, Gamma will have the opportunity to maybe try and get some played gold back, will equalize the play a little bit. What is big though is who were able to pick up the kills that right, a kill going over to Chovy this early on, really gonna accelerate him in the Ari. Also do note Pace going for the Lefelity Kaisa build, trying to uh, really amp up the aggressive uh, pressure. We've seen the Duskblade uh, yeah. and, and Umbral Spike be very unfun to play into, and Umbral Glaive obviously, as we've seen countless times, incredibly valuable at controlling early vision. Yeah, the rush is actually Kind of uh, oppressive here yeah. from Gen G oh, as yeah. Pei is able to clear out any vision that is left in lane. It means that all of the brush control is there all of the time for Gen G. First Infernal going to be taken down here. It looks like Peanut won't be contested for that one as Delight is playing Cow Bouncer. Should be able to get them out of there if they do want to come down. So there it is. This cure does come through. Hextech going to be our next one. A few different options as far as souls are concerned, but. Hextech and Infernal are probably people's favorites oh, as far as the other two. Oh, yeah, Levi could be in a little bit of trouble. Pallet is in the area. Slater could come on down, but there's the Vault Breaker to connect on to Levi. Headbutt Bolt does come down, and it's all about picking your poison. Choose your target, and Peanut has said, Pallet, you are dead. And that is indeed how it is going to go. Doran also pushing Kiaya away in this top lane. As Trovi doing a little bit of a drive-by, but that is not the real Nico. In fact, Cardi's moving towards that top side of the map. Doran wanting to get towards this plate, but it might be a uh, decent bait here for Gam. Not going to overextend, though, as you can see. And, and this is where I think a lot of the opponents of Genji always run into trouble. We're seeing it happen to Gam as well. Um, off of that skirmish that Genji, they gave up Herald, but they were able to win the fight. They then are able to path as Doran. All right, there's the all out. Doesn't get over the wall, though. So Doran is just going to say, here's my R button, and um, just pay it no mind. We'll be able to get a another turret uh, might also die does uh, does spot levi here so he should be playing respectfully uh he's Cassante with flash though so well there's the flash kick to land onto doran he gets stunned up as well and doran's now trying to escape but it's not gonna happen yeah. levi gonna lock down that kill as you were saying you knew he was there doran no. yeah it's classic doran i mean i'm not i'm not surprised but i am a little bit disappointed nonetheless i'm not you're not no Desensitized. I mean, these things have happened before. Um, he was he was oh. playing to his limits, you know. Uh, something like that. As yeah, Trovi is going to teleport in. Looks for the opportunities. Burnt the ult already. Kiaya out of mana almost entirely, and there's the charm. Kill going to go down. And that is going to be Trovi's second. Pays here towards his bottom side of the map as well, looking to be aggressive towards Slater. You can see Slater paying him a lot of respect. Pays doing his best to make sure he denies as much as possible. With this wave, will push towards the Zaya. And Slater should be able to catch the wave in this 1v1. 
Yeah, what we are seeing though, and, and this is well, Genji, I think, really only does this as oh, hold up. Another hip up pulp is going to come through, and another charm will land. Cardi's going to be able to get that flash off, but there's the cease and assist. Pop Blossom going to come through, but Peanut is going to be tanky enough. He wanted to give the kill to Chovy, but it is not going to happen. Oh, another turret shot, and Chovy will survive. So it's fine. I love how Delight just sets up a perfect. Perfect, you know, standing there with his with his unbreakable will, tanks it perfectly. Chovy's rooted on the turret and Peanut's like, peace out, hombre. <laughs> Good luck with that one. If you die, you die. Hey, there was no one else there, you know? And if he died, he was gonna die anyway, no matter what Peanut did. So he may as well exit. Oh, I think it's fine. Uh, 2,000 gold going to be the lead here for Genji. Nothing really to worry about just yet. However, it is the tempo of the game that is the problem here for Gam because it is slowly but surely slipping out of their control more and more. Kiaya gonna be able to grab a few plates here though on this top side. The Jack's absolutely a win condition here for Gam. Kiaya has also been a big power point for this team uh, throughout play-ins as well. So some options to play around, but it's looking uh, more and more dice. Uh, for Gam, the main thing now is to try and get like one big fight around the Dragon, ideally, where you're really able to play off of Kati, where Levi maybe gets a, gets himself an early pick, or Pallet can try and absorb uh, the engage that inevitably is going to come through. We've seen Genji playing very aggressive, very dive-heavy, really happy to scrap and skirmish as Delight does not know that Levi is behind him, but this is an Alistair with Elden Flash, so not the juiciest of targets. And they, they seem to be looking towards trying to make a play on Pace, but he's playing very respectful with Delight hovering as well, and Chovy making his way over. Isn't really an opening here for Gam. Yeah. Have a look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. Of course, in lane, um, Chovy does focus on economy. That has been his thing. Glad that we're seeing that represented here um, pretty accurately. I don't necessarily know whether it tells the story uh, of how this game has been going, but you've seen that Cardi has been first on the roam a few times, which does go back to what Chovy of old used to be like. But what we've seen from Chovy has actually been a vast improvement on supporting the rest of the team around the map and not necessarily having as much of that lane priority, which absolutely is not represented at all um, in this game thus far. Just a bit sad. Um, Peanut going to start up the objective here. I, I do think that Gam, once you start falling too far behind, it becomes really hard to find consistent win conditions. Doran going in again. Yeah. Not going to press the R button just yet. And Chovy looks for the Everfrost. Oh, just barely. The heels of Pallet were in trouble there. And Peanut will be able to lock down this Rift Herald, of course. Gam with full information. Levi looking for that opportunity. There's another safeguard kick onto Chovy, but um, it's, a, it's an Ari. So he's able to press R, get out a few times. But they do put it on cooldown, and it could give an opportunity for Gam to get themselves their first rate of this game. Yeah, would have loved to see Pallet maybe go for a, a Pallet. All right. Yeah, Pallet um, is just going to get knocked into the air, and Pay is going to be able to lock that one down. My goodness. The Akathian rain is terrifying from this Kaiser. And they're going to push uh, the, this Rift Herald through two turrets, as it turns out. Kiaya also getting down relatively low towards this top side, but Doran going to find the flash. The all-out comes through, and he just chops up the Jax. And after some early attention from the rest of his team, Doran says, I can take care of it by myself now. And this is really where I think a lot of teams, as we have seen uh, Genji's mid game, particularly when they are not falling behind in any of their lanes, is so oppressive. They're pushing you in mid. They're forcing uh, defensive summoners, take down Pallet, turn that into an immediate uh, double charge of the Rift Herald. And uh, yeah, Doran is just off on his own, doing what Doran does. Yeah. And actually, I think really nice setup here. Uh, knows that he has the damage available. Goes for the Q into flash. Guarantees that he's able to take down Kiaya. And everything kind of starting to fall apart for Gamer. It's no surprise, but given how the early game looked, as we can see here, pretty yeah. even. It's uh, quickly getting out of control. The thing that I do want to see is that Gam continue to try and go for these plays, though I don't know whether it necessarily gets better as this game goes on. And so uh, Levi, yeah. I think, has had the right idea in a lot of occasions. Trovi in the side lane here towards the bottom lane, looking for this outer turret. Should be able to lock that one down. It's the last one remaining. But the map is just wide open at this stage, and it is so scary with the amount of pick potential that Gen.G has. I mean, if you walk towards Delight, 
then there could be so many players that could just nip over a wall and collect you, and the chain CC is terrifying. Uh, we've also gotten to the point in the game where the level two for Killer Instinct is available, so yeah. every single play that you go for, again, every member on Genji can set up Plasma Stacks for pay, so he can join at a moment's notice, gonna have a fat back here as well, able to pick up, uh, was just sitting on a Dusk Blade for quite a while, or uh, rather a uh, Dirk for quite a while there, able to immediately pick that Dusk Blade up. And uh, when there is no front line on the main enemy team, this build, very impressive, double TP coming yeah. in. That is a uh, solo lane sandwich here, is the charm point blank range is going to connect onto Slater, but he's going to be out of cleanse flash, get himself out, but is it going to be enough? The answer is no, it's Peanut, comes on through with the cease and desist, and the Zyre is going to be taken down, Pallet's now trying to stay alive, Doran will be able to lock that one down, and meanwhile, Gam is being disintegrated, they do manage to take down Pays, but I think that is going to be the end good news for the BCS squad and Gen G will find all but Cardi in this one and Cardi unable to join the play there I think uh, might have a teleport available at the beginning but even if you do by the time that you teleporting in I think the fight was already lost uh, and it's the early aggression or the uh, the, the way that Gen G plays as mentioned Chovy going in here catches Slater immediately forcing a defensive summoner and then even if uh, Slater is able to press the Zara button here you're not making it out, but due to the ocean rift, he actually never sees Peanut no. coming. Has no opportunity at all. And then, uh, oh, Pays actually ends, ends up staying alive for a little bit longer because of Duskblade. Doesn't end up mattering, though. Like, it's nice that Kiaya gets a kill. But while all of that is happening, Doran also killed Palette. That, that was kind of a side story. And uh, the gold lead that was somewhat manageable uh, is now... Not. Less. Less not, manageable. No, I'd say not. I, I wouldn't say less. I, I'm saying it's not, not manageable. Not manageable? Not manageable, Atlas. Whoa. Uh, you know me, I, I'm not one for no. strong and words. Slater is now not going to get vault broken here by Peanut, but the Featherstorm does have to come through, but he's not going to get caught by the pop lots of the knock-up from Delight. What was that? They do manage to get yet another kill for Kiaia, but it is once again not the story they were looking for as he will eventually go down. It's a double for FaZe in the end of it all, and this time it'll be the ace for Genji. And Baron about to spawn in five seconds. Genji took some time to get going, but looking like Gam has been unable to keep this team down. Shouldn't come as a surprise as the Baron's gonna get taken, and I don't think we're gonna be in this game for much longer, and unfortunately for Gam, looks like the 0-1 pool is waiting for them. Yeah, um, I just want to say, like, with pulverizers like that, like, Delight Man, what an incredible start to his world's run, because he was one of the players that didn't necessarily perform as well when we got to MSI, so it's good to see him starting things off with a play like this. Iconic to see Peanut miss his flash Q, but it doesn't end up mattering at all, right? The amount of CC damage available. Gen G is so far ahead at this point in yeah. items that um, even if, if, if they lose one or two members, you can probably clinch out that fight. But if you do get everyone grouped up, it's uh, it's rough. It certainly is. Kaya, certainly hats off um, for always being the one that's able to at least take something away from Gen G in these fights. But like you say, it's just not looking all that close. The Baron going to be secured here by Gen G. They can grab themselves Soul Point if they would like as well. But I imagine that the base is at the forefront of their mind right now. And our Red Bull Baron power play is not exactly all that healthy at this point. But I have a feeling it's going to grow. I wonder not right if... now, though, because Kai is going to get some money. Yeah, it's a bounty. Heck yeah. That's, that's valuable. I wonder how aggressive Gen G is going to play. I think Levi is showing on Vision now, so... Definitely. And actually, you know, I, I don't hate the cross map from Gam. It's not like you can fight this team. So you might as well try and hope that they just back off. Yep, getting That's anything is uh, definitely a positive. As Kiaia is going to keep going, and he may as well, but these inhibitor turrets will fall. At least two inhibitors will go down. And defending Nexus turrets is certainly going to be a priority. And as you can see, Kiaia agrees. He's going to be heading home now. We'll see whether they can hold on because Gen G. They really, it looks like they don't want to be here for all that long today, Chronicler. We're looking to try and end it as soon as possible. The Vault Breaker going to be channeled here. Picking your target is going to be important as Peanut is just going to, to use it in another direction. And yeah, there is a headbutt pulverize onto Cardi and into the back line goes Pallet. The Haymaker does by a little bit of time and the Pop Blossom's decent, but Genji, the wallets are too heavy at this stage of the game and they are just
just gonna rip through Gam. Slater, the last one to go down. It's a double for Chobi. They'll deal with these Nexus turrets and the Nexus. No call of the day here, 22 and a half minutes. And Genji, I think I saw a JDG uh, icon there at the end Ooh, as they I dove like into that. the side, into the uh, into the fountain because Genji looking good here today. The fact that with the Swiss format we can have a Genji JDG best of one, provided that JDG be, uh, beat BDS, of course, our uh, our next matchup. Um, that'd be something. Unfortunately for Gam, uh, the same fate uh, for them as many in LCK team. Yeah, um, I don't know how much we necessarily learned from this one. This was always going to be a really, really difficult yeah. game for Gam, but we certainly learned that Gen.G still look really good. And as we've been hearing, uh, you know, around Korea at the moment, when you have whispers of scrims and things like that, um, certainly Gen.G still on a little bit of a tear, and with JDG staying with them, makes some sense that they're getting some decent practice in. Seeming like it uh, hasn't necessarily been um, unfruitful. Thus far, Gam going to be going 0-1. I think the games might get progressively easier from here. They, by, by design, they will. Because that, that's how Swiss works. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to end with no, a no, positive I, I like, note. You know I like a positive note. Yeah. yeah. For Gam, as mentioned, I think that the, the, the story arc they had from play-ins by itself, you're always going to be happy. I think that, that, that for, for many a team from a minor region is always going to be the goal, right? Make it out, yeah. make it to the Swiss stage. The fact that you then end up going against the LCK number one seed, or might have been, you know, any any number one seed of one of the major regions, was always going to be an uphill battle. And as we saw in the gold graph, very, uh, very straightforward game. It absolutely was. But as we head to, head to break, let's check out exclusive behind the scenes footage of your world's teaser brought to you by the Oppo. Unlock extra loot with the World's Event Pass. Every Event Pass purchase will add to the prize pool for Worlds 2023. There's a lot to celebrate at this time of year. Huh? What is this? Bringing in a new roommate to save money, is that the plan? Say hi to Glenn from work. Yeah, I think I have a much better plan. We switched to my plan from Verizon. That is a good plan, Glenn. Get my plan starting at just $25 when you bring your own phones. Plus, save when you add perks like the Disney bundle. It's your Verizon.